get our hands dirty. Welcome back to Unpro's Garage. Before we get back into the groove of S13 K24 Progress, I noticed a lot of comments talking about Why do you call this the simple C-time spelling? There's nothing simple about it, blah, blah, blah. For you newbies, I want to give you a little history lesson. I didn't just buy this car. I've actually had this car since 2017. So for some of you OGs who watch Unprofessionals, you've already seen this, but for the new people, I bought this in 2017 for like 1,200 bucks with the sole goal of simple C-time. When I got the car, it was pretty much bone stock, KA24, dual cam. It's funny, going from KA24 to K24, but I threw BC Racing coilovers on it. And these. And my friends are gonna help me put coilovers on it. The diff was already welded, and then I just went driving. I met up with Julian from Animal Style, and we did some tandems. <laughs> Drove the crap out of the car. I literally drove the wheel off of the car. The goal of this car was always to just keep it simple, get a lot of seat time. Somewhere down the line, the Nissan K24 just took a crap on itself, spun a bearing, didn't want to do anything. And what happened to poor Hertz? Oh. Try again? I swapped another one in there, got it running once, did a burnout in it, and then it would never run again. So, and I, I think it was wiring issues, but I was pretty much done with the K24. I felt betrayed, I didn't want to deal with it, so I decided that I was gonna go rotary, which uh, as you can see is not happening, but that's only because I have this rotary car, my FD is gonna have a rotary. So I, I thought I wanted everything to be rotary, but I kind of just want different cars. I want everything to feel different. I want a different driving experience with every car that I drive. So, I decided to go Honda K24, and now I know you're thinking, Oh, it's still not simple, so you can't call it simple C-time. You're doing a turbocharged Honda motor swap. Think about this. If you're going to 2J swap your 240, you got to do motor mounts, you got to do oil pan, you got to do transmit, you got to do all the same stuff that I'm doing with this. So it's still kind of a simple C-time talent, simple C-time simple. It's still kind of simple, kind of. Maybe. But yeah, so there's your update. I'm actually headed out to go pick up a new car for my fleet. I don't know why, but I am. And then tomorrow we're gonna get into that car and working on this car, so. Your boy's car cane addiction has been getting kind of heavy. My GS slammed on BC coilovers with three piece US built weds. But that's not even the problem because I just bought another car. Oh. If you've been keeping up with like VHS and things like that, you may have seen me at SEMA Googling over Dai Yoshihara's Corolla. I've always loved Corollas. I owned one about 15 years ago and a deal came up that I couldn't pass. So there she is. 1985 Toyota Corolla. Cane addiction has gotten a little silly. Ugh. 4AG swapped 1985 Toyota Corolla. I'm very excited to have this, but with my luck, one day in the ownership, the car randomly developed a wiring issue. The tail light, running lights, turn signals, hazards, just that whole little bit of harness caught a short and melted the wire all the way through. So with this project and the S13, they both are gonna need some wiring. I am in love with this car. What's going on, Hoonigan viewers? Let me ask you this. Are you the type of person that winds up in a ditch sideways with a lot of people recording you on their phones? Do you perhaps own a C4 Corvette and drive it like it is an actual race car? So if you've got race car dreams, but more like a Mustang leaving a car show skill set, we've got the solution for you. Here at Hoonigan, we're offering you a chance 
you crows. We're offering you the chance to win an all expense paid trip to Skip Barber Racing School, where you can learn how to not understeer or crash into things. Look tight as f where you can stop acting like you know how to drive and actually be able to drive. Here's how you enter. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Hoonigan. Sign up for a new subscription to Dollar Shave Club. Then go to hoonigan.com slash DSC. Follow the steps on that page. After that, you're done. But hurry, contest ends soon. All right, so today we are going to do what we have to do to drop this motor into this car. Strictly for mock-up, because right after I get the motor in and set up, I want to send the car over to Surge. You've seen Surge in Building Battle, helping out with roll cages and all kinds of other fabrication stuff. Well, he's going to do all the fabrication on my intercooler. I think I want to tub the front of this so I don't have any clearance issues and then uh, like exhaust and downpipe and stuff like that. So I'm going to get this ready for mock-up. Hey, what's up? How's it going? So this is Jeremy, he's with Haywire, or he is Haywire, and uh, he makes things like this. Sheesh. Just a nice careful, little... Careful. Might get burned, it's too hot. <laughs> you saying I'm bad luck? You saying, <laughs> you saying anything I... <laughs> you might fry some wires up. <laughs> well, that's why he's here. I managed to fry some wires up on this, on my new car. I'm gonna let him go to town on that, and then I think I'm gonna start getting this motor ready to drop into here so we can start doing mock-ups. He's gonna make us do all the work, that's fine. Oh, so you signed up. Hey! Yeah, <laughs> all right, cool. All right, let's get going. So I got all the parts laid out. Clutch Masters flywheel, Garrett Turbo, TF Works K24 rear wheel drive manifold, some Koyo coolers, radium fuel parts, Deech Works fuel pumps and injectors, some Beamer World stuff for my transmission, K Miata transmission adapter for the BMW transmission. TF Works beautiful, beautiful shifter. Like this, this thing is dope. Bolts right into the factory location. And then you use this rod off of the transmission to connect to the linkage back here. I love this transmission already because it's not going to be a pain in the ass to get in or out. And then you got the K Miata upper coolant neck so you can route all the coolant lines to the front. Thermostat housing, oil pump adapter, beautiful billet mounts, and a beautiful K24. But over here isn't as pretty unfortunately. And I'm sure Jeremy probably hates my guts because this is turning into a nightmare. So it literally goes from the fuse box under the dash into the fender, through the hood, and almost to the other side of the car. <laughs> so that's right there, the driver's foot area. And then it's melted and burnt. Single, you see single wires all the way through. So yeah, I'm very blessed to have Jeremy here to sort that out. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, so it looked like the rear main seal was leaking, so I just ordered a new one, but we were having a hard time getting it out. That's why it's not on film, because we were very frustrated. But luckily, Josh came through. You may not have seen him on camera much, but he works here. He does stuff. He makes your thumbnails. He makes your videos pop. Thank you, man. So Thank if you, you. <laughs> if you like the videos, this is the guy who, you know, who... I, I'm who, who's making the stuff. He gets your attention. <laughs> All right. Without him, you wouldn't see the videos. Yes. So he came through, saw us struggling, laughed at us, and was like, "Let me drop some knowledge on you fools. Let's see what's up. Drop a little screw, like <laughs> drill a pilot hole, and then drill a screw into the rear main, and then just use pliers to pull it out, and it came right out. And you don't scratch any part of the inside or here. So. Yeah. So no thank seals. Thank no you. For, thank you for your knowledge. Oh, you're welcome. Man. So rear main seals out. K Miata transmission adapter for BMW transmissions is on. Next is fitting the K Miata 
coolant passage and a couple of other small things, but we're almost there. We're almost there. I got a little sidetracked on this thing because I wanted to take off a bunch of stickers off of this thing. So the sticker tune is looking much better now. We got Johnny dialed. Give us a little spin. Let's see what's on the back. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this thing is looking a lot cleaner now. Took a bunch of stickers off of it. Had to keep some, but I want to start fresh, you know? All right, back to the K-Swap. About to install this uh, uh, K-Miata coolant adapter, but uh, I was having issues getting this mounted to both of them. We already took one stud out, but Chris over here saved the day and told me that I'm an idiot and I was doing it wrong. <laughs> So just a trusty old trick. This comes with four bolts, but it never occurred to me. You gotta pull studs. To, yeah, to pull the studs out is just like, oh, maybe there's extra bolts. But so here's a cool little trick. Smash two nuts together, tighten the crap out of them. Like the crap. Or else they'll just still back it up. And then boom. Stud comes out. Yep. No more studs. All right, so we're gonna get this on, get the other couple pieces on. In the rush of getting Supi and Jamo to help me out with the oil pump and things like that, we actually forgot to install the K Miata oil pump adapter, which allows us to run a different pickup tube. So this pickup tube doesn't work. That oil pump adapter that I just showed you bolts onto the back of this. Um, so now I'm back in the oil pan, taking off the windage tray. I'm gonna pull this off, then slap this on, and then slap this on. Did you say that? With a question mark on the end? No, it was, it no, like no, that wasn't mark. a question mark. Slap this on. Slap that. Slap huh? this on. <laughs> <laughs> pump adapter see there K Miata is now on so this is proper gonna put the windage tray back on and then uh, we should be able to drop this motor in if we want to so we'll see what's up in a little bit all right moment of truth Jeremy look at this look at this, <laughs> look, look, look at this. is this just dead wires Everything was melted and just pure wire showing, no coating. So everything was shorting out. So give us a quick rundown of what you did. Open up the entire harness so I could get to all the wiring and trace the wiring from the driver's side kick panel all the way to behind the passenger headlight and took out all the wiring that was melted together and corroded or shorted out with each other. So all of these were melted together. All of, all of those were melted together. Yeah. And now we got a nice little smooth boy. So replace every single wire all the way from here, all the way through, whatever had to be, whatever was damaged and needed to be taken out, replaced it. And then now we just gotta reloom it and see if it works. All right, so now it's set up to test. So before my running lights didn't work, my turn signals didn't work, the headlight motors didn't work, the hazards didn't work, the radio didn't work. So basically like pretty much all the accessories didn't work. We're gonna crank this thing up real quick and see what happens. Boom. Lights? We got lights. Tail lights? Tail lights. Boom. What about the turn signal? We got tail lights. Hit me with a turny. There it is. Oh, yeah. We got turny boys? Yeah, we got turny boys. Yeah, we got turny boys. I hear the fuel pump, too. So fuel pump's like good. Start. Let's see if it starts. And the lights stay on. Yeah, the lights gotta, the lights lights gotta stay, stay on. on. Not in gear. Woo! Woo! It's the man right there. Your boy's got headlight motors. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It didn't work when you bought it. No, they didn't. Now that the Kroll is in a good place, back to the K, and we just got this oil pump adapter from K Miata installed, and then the TF works. You see right there? TF makes this custom pickup tube, uh, and it skims the bottom of the oil pan. You'll see when we get it. Or you probably saw it if you watched some of the older videos, but once that's on, we can take the motor off of the engine stand, put it on a hoist, add the motor mounts, and then slide that bad boy in. So we are almost there. Home stretch. Home stretch? stretch? No, home man, stretch. no, home stretch. <laughs> what? That's just a stretch. For home stretch, Eugene Jr. <laughs> I wanted to end this episode dropping the motor in the car, but I'm missing a few things. Flywheel bolts, 
I don't really want to put the motor in without the clutch and flywheel on, so I'm gonna stop at Honda, buy some flywheel bolts. We got one motor mount on, TF Works billet aluminum motor mount. Pretty much got the motor ready to go. We installed the uh, transmission adapter, the coolant passages, one motor mount, cleaned up a bunch of stuff, got the oil pan, or got the oil pump adapter and pickup on. Pretty much ready to go. Corolla's pretty much done. Shout out again to Jeremy from Haywire, and that's a wrap. Do we wrap these? I don't know if we wrap these. That's a wrap. But next time on Dragon Ball Z, that you'll see a motor go in the car, and that's gonna be sick. It's hard to put in. Yeah. Either transmission is now attached to the motor. Look at all the space. Hey, you want me to take it around the block? Check this out. Yeah, I mounted that. It, we, I kind of signed us off when I, when I put it. <laughs> Yeah. We could, it's a quick little adjustment. You know? we'll, we'll go to Hot Topic real quick and get a universal oh, pair of shoes. Yeah. You know that. Is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>